Welcome to Supermani. Uh, when you read too many books, when you watch too many videos, when you talk to too many people, uh, you get confused about where you learnt what. But everything is learnt in the market, from the market, from books, uh, from talking to people. One question which people ask is, uh, should we concentrate on uh, saving uh, money or on investing the money? This is a very difficult question to answer, but look at it this way. When uh, saving is uh, more important is when your income is high and your investments are small, right? This happens when you're young. When you're young, you don't have much of investments. Even if you assume that, uh, even if I assume that you're doing a uh, 15,000 per month SIP or just a 5,000 rupee per month SIP. That will put only 60,000 in your account at the end of year one, whereas your salary may be about 3-4 lakhs. So assuming it is 4 lakhs and you are saving 30% of your money, so 1 lakh 20 is what you are saving. Uh, so if you are saving 1 lakh 20 and your total corpus is only 60,000, even assuming you want 10% on that, that is only 6,000. So your uh, current income, I mean the amount that you are able to save is 1 lakh 20 and the amount by which your investment is growing, that is your investment income is only 6000. So this is about 20 times of that. So later on when you reach my level, uh, you will the, uh, the equation will reverse. My earned income today must be uh, 1 20th of my investment income. Investment income means the appreciation on my investment the dividend that I get and the interest that I get on the on my PPF and things like that. So the ratio would exactly reverse. So I would be maybe uh, earning 6 and uh, my appreciation may be 20. So it could be uh, or it could be 120, right? So it, my the investment income, my investment income is approximately 20 times my or actually it is higher than 20 times also than my earned income because my earned income is low. Why is my earned income low? Because I don't have any full time job. Yes, I do training, I do assignments once in a while for people. Uh, but <clears throat> that, uh, that of course gives me income, that income is enough for me to run my household. But the appreciation on my portfolio, my dividend income, my interest on whatever uh, uh, <coughs> small debt portion I have, all that will be much greater than my earned income. This is bound to happen. So, uh, and for some people it could happen at 40, for some people it would happen at 50, whatever. At some stage, the uh, investment income will be greater than the uh, amount that you are able to save uh, from your current income. Right, of course, from your uh, non-current, from your investment income also you will be saving. So, ignore that. But the amount of money that you are saving from your earned income is what we are talking about. So, depending on which is higher. So, very fair, I mean fair enough that the uh, young boy should be uh, trying to save a higher percentage of his uh, income. But for somebody like me, I should not be worried about saving at all. I should only be worrying about my investment, making sure that my investments are smarter, good, they are earning well, etc. Right? So, uh, this is an important thing of knowing where to concentrate. Obviously, you have to concentrate on the bigger number. So, for me, I should be concentrating on my investment and not so much on my current income. Whereas for a younger person, somebody like my daughter, she should be concentrating on her earned income and trying to save a big percentage of that uh, rather than on her investment income. Her investment income can't be much because she's just charting out in her life, right? So this is, this is an important learning which I thought I should uh, pass on to you. Uh, then the other question which uh, I keep getting asked is how much should one save? Honestly, there is no answer that you should look for a question like this. How much you should save depends on how much you can save and what is your comfort level of saving. It should not that uh, it should not be that you give up everything else. You don't travel. You don't. Uh, you don't go to a coffee shop. <laughs> you. You do, I don't want to do brand building for anybody, but yeah, don't go to a coffee shop, you don't want to, uh, you don't travel, you won't uh, go and enjoy yourself a, a proper meal, you won't go out with friends, any of the, if you keep on sacrificing things and uh, you uh, keep investing and keep saving and then investing, for you maybe it's a personal pleasure. For, I know many people for whom it's a personal pleasure of saving money. They don't mind uh, uh, living frugally uh, or cringing on everything but saving for them, yes. But if you are part of a family, 
your uh, wife and children are going to hate you for it right you can't do that you have to give them a reasonable standard of living which they expect and which you can afford sometimes you can't afford that's a different thing then you can say look i can't afford this that happens only when you communicate well about the money that you have and what are your priorities it's not necessary that you should uh, indulge a family in everything that they want but at least they should understand what are you trying to do if you tell your daughter that this is for your education that i'm saving this is for your marriage that i'm saving or whatever or we are putting together all this for 3 years so that we can go and visit uh, some important uh, location where you want to go on a vacation whatever so you have to know the purpose because if you without knowing the purpose when you try to save money and you uh, don't spend on anything then life gets very difficult for everybody else around you so uh, what should you do for having some guilt free uh, guilt free spending is uh, sit down as a family and make rules and say what are your priorities and once the priorities are done you say okay we have an annual 2 lakh rupee 3 lakh rupee budget for travel or for having fun whatever it may if it means going out to a hotel and eating and all that is part of the fun we'll uh, earmark 3 lakhs for it or 5 lakhs for it some whatever number suits you and then make sure that everybody sees that and that money is kept in some uh, equity savings fund or something like that that's also growing and you say okay the minute we see uh, 15 lakhs in this we will go on a european trip the minute we see 4 lakhs in this we may go on a trip to goa any of these things right so you put norms and do it don't just keep saving it's I, i to me it is very painful even even as a young boy or girl if you make these uh, habits to be very very frugal and say oh i will not eat in this place i can't afford it and things like that uh, you're not going to make too many friends you're not going to have a great social life your children are not going to like it so please understand all this uh, another question which i keep getting asked and these are all questions that i'm uh, answering from uh, whatever i'm seeing uh from the questions which people have asked is it wrong to borrow it's not wrong to borrow but you have to know what is responsible borrowing and what is not responsible borrowing for somebody like mukesh ambani this much of growth or gautam adani this much of growth would not have been possible without the borrowing but the same thing cannot be said anil ambani borrowed too much and then he he could not repay and he declared bankruptcy in some court right so responsible borrowing is important you need to borrow if you must borrow you should borrow responsibly you should be able to pay all your emis on time you should not have to worry about oh my god how will i pay the emi oh my god why have i borrowed so much so and borrow for uh, buying assets it's okay borrowing for expenses sounds like extravagance also uh, there is one school of thought which says you should buy a car which you can afford to pay out right otherwise you should not buy maybe you should buy a second hand car maybe you should buy a smaller car whatever that you decide but some people who say that no 70% of the car should be paid for and 30% should be borrowed right so you make your own rules there are no uh, i don't think uh, we can give any very specific rules for car borrowing so i would also agree that uh, if you can pay 80% down payment and borrow just 20% that makes sense though recently when the friend was buying he just signed out a check for uh, 15 lakhs and bought the car so that is one way of buying another way of course is to borrow so you decide how much you want to borrow however when you are borrowing for a house i have a video which says there is a 3 10 20 40 rule uh, which is uh, i mean three times your uh, uh, three time the emi should not be more than one third of your uh, uh, of the of the total salary that you get uh, your uh, cost of the house should not be more than three times the uh, three times your ctc uh 40% should be the down payment that you make uh 20 years is the maximum period for which you should be taking a loan right so once you do all these things make very strong rules for borrowing for a house because that's a big borrowing that people do borrowing a car borrowing for a car can be more flexible but borrowing for a house please be more particular about how much you are borrowing uh when you should you buy a house or rent a house a uh, rental is always preferable but there is there is going to be tremendous social pressure on you to buy a house everybody around you is going to say oh you're staying with your parents that's uh, that's bad so you please shift so when you shift and you start paying rent people will say oh don't rent buy 
because buying is uh, better than renting this is a nonsensical argument but that is bound to happen people will tell you uh, that when you're uh, renting you're throwing away money and when you're buying you're creating value this is nonsense but then people will you will uh, succumb to that at some stage because somebody will argue that uh, look uh, i can't come and stay with you because you're staying with your mother so you need to have a house or something like that so you can't stay with your parents so you have to move out now moving out to uh, uh, another house in the same city is kind of a taboo so you can't move out so what do you do the only logic for you to move out is to buy a place right so people will buy you will buy it doesn't really change things uh, Uh, when, what age uh, can I retire? Okay, retirement is not about an age. Retirement is more about a number. So if you have uh, 30 times your annual expenses at your age of 60, assuming uh, I'm using all these calculations for the age of 60, assuming that uh, you have good health and uh, all that, blah blah blah, you have a house and all that. then uh, 30 times your annual expenses so if your annual expenses at the age of 60 is 10 lakhs then you need 3 crores the one way of guessing is to say if your expenses at the, your age of 50 is about uh, 5 lakhs then it would be something like 12 lakhs by the time you retire and you may be able to cut down on some expenses so from 5 it will go to 10 may not go to 12 over 10 year period so therefore when you are at 50 then you need uh, 60 times and when you are at 60 you need uh, 30 times it is always 30 times at the age of expenses at the age of 60 but at 50 when you are trying to guess uh, try to guess 60 times your uh, expenses at the age of 50 of course if there school fees etc you can remove but uh, that's an intelligent guess please remember this is not carved in stone so you have to be careful about what suits you thank you